most of all an ambulance driver. I wanted to do something that was useful and exciting and many would say that composing is neither but I, <laughs> I have found a little bit of usefulness in what I do and I have to say that particularly recently it has been very exciting. There is enormous heart in the music of Roxana Panufnik. Her scores are lush and generous. She never tries to trick her listeners or overcomplicate the point. She often looks to spiritual musics from around the world and she creates a sound that is rich and tender and somehow universal. I think as, as a child and growing up, um, I didn't have any female role models, whether they were composers or anything else for that matter. Um, and I think that says a lot about the times that I was growing up in, in the 1970s um, and slowly through the 80s during my teenage years, um, women came through uh, various jobs and high profile careers, but, but not as a child. It was by a process of elimination, really, that I became a composer, and in the end, it was the only thing that I could effectively and, and properly do, um, and that I was interested in. So it was the only direction for me. I found out that I wanted to be a composer when I was 17 and I wrote a small chamber requiem at school for a cousin who died in a car crash and it was performed publicly, the school did it um, around the area publicly and I so loved the process of working with other musicians and trying things out and creating something um, that, that made such a big sound and was such a voice for me that it was at that point I realised that that's what I wanted to do. But I still wasn't convinced till many years later that I could do it as a full-time job. My one piece of advice to a young composer would be only write the kind of music that you'd like to listen to. My obsession with late French Romantic music was very formative as a composer and I, as a teenager, was also learning to play the flute and the harp. And I very quickly found out what it was that I liked about that music. So it would be the harmony, it would be the harmonic progressions. And also in um, Russian music, early 20th century Russian music. So it was very clear to me, right from the start, what kind of music I like to listen to. I think the lowest point in my career was in 2000, um, I had a chamber opera that was commissioned by the Polish National Opera, which went down fantastically in Poland. But when it came to London, it had very mixed reviews. And of course, I didn't, I didn't focus on the positive ones, but instead on a couple of really, really, really bad ones. And I was instantly convinced that nobody in the music world would ever talk to me again and that I'd become a complete pariah and I should give up and go home. Um, but bizarrely, I went into the BBC the next day after the reviews had come out and everybody was so friendly and I thought, actually, perhaps it's okay. I think this particularly come to me now I've turned 50, is that I just can't please everybody. It's just impossible. Everybody's got such different tastes, so there's no point in even trying. The bond that you are going to create with the listener, because that's who you're doing it for. And the players, of course, that's very important too. So I think the key ingredients um, in a 
good piece is emotion. I would love to write a massive, epic, full-scale opera. At the moment, my head is absolutely full of the piece that I'm finishing for Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, which has um, musical influences from Ghana in West Africa and Northern India. And um, I'm just getting to the end of it, and it's all shouting in a sort of cacophony in my head at the moment. It's quite painful. Deus Deus Maus, which is a, a psalm setting that appears in my Westminster Mass, and it's a cappella, but it um, just says everything about me emotionally and harmonically that I'd want somebody to know. Modlitwa is Polish for prayer, and it's a beautiful poem to the Virgin of Skempy, which is written by poet Jerzy Pietrzykiewicz, who's a great friend of my father's. And he asked my father to set it to music, and there are two verses. The first one is quite long, and the second one is shorter. And it was about, I think about a year before my father died, and he was quite ill. And he set the second verse to music, but had the first verse narrated over the music of the second verse. And a couple of years after he died, Yeji came to me and he said, I'm sure if your father hadn't have been ill, he would have set that longer first verse to music as well. Will you do it? And I hummed and hard. And it just happened at that time, there was a commission from um, Alberstam Festival in Lebanon. Um, to write something that was in memory of my father and be part of a Polish festival. So I talked to my mum about it and she said, no, 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 he just, he only wanted it narrated. He didn't want, want it to be set, but you know, do what, do what you like. And a few weeks later, I had this amazing dream. I dreamt I was walking around in our garden of our family home and when we were little, my father worked in the studio at the end of the garden. We used to go and tap on his window very naughtily because we knew we weren't supposed to interrupt him. But in the stream, he appeared at the window and he did this, he beckoned to me. And so I went into the studio and he was sitting at the piano and there was a long bench and he patted the stool so I came and sat next to him. And we were improvising together. And when I woke up, I realised it was okay to do that with Modlitva. Oh, 